Python tutorial double exponential smoothing methods. Exponential smoothing methods consist of forecasts based on previous periods data with exponentially decaying influence the older they become. Their notation is ETS, which stands for Error, Trend and Seasonality, where each can be none, additive, additive damped, multiplicative or multiplicative damped. This topic is part of forecasting models with Python Curse. Feel free to take a look at Curse curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of this video. An example of double exponential smoothing method is whole linear trend method which consists of forecast with linear trend pattern. For full reference, I recommend that you read Charles Holt, Forecasting Trends and Seasonal by Exponentially Weighted Averages, published by the Office of Naval Research Memorandum in 1957. Its ETS notation is AAN, in which error is additive, trend is additive, and there is no seasonality. As a formula, current period forecast is equal to previous periods level forecast plus h, which is the number of periods for which we are doing the forecast, multiplied by previous periods trend forecast. Previous periods level forecast is equal to an alpha level smoothing coefficient multiplied by previous periods data plus 1 minus alpha multiplied by second previous periods level forecast plus second previous periods trend forecast. Alpha level smoothing coefficient is a value between 0 and 1. Previous periods trend forecast is equal to a beta trend smoothing coefficient multiplied by previous periods level forecast minus second previous periods level forecast plus 1 minus beta multiplied by second previous periods trend forecast. Beta trend smoothing coefficient is a value between 0 and 1. Great, so let's go into Python PyCharm IDE so that we can study whole linear trend method with greater detail. Excellent, so here we are within Python PyCharm IDE. In this tutorial, we'll be working within Python tutorial double exponential smoothing methods code file. The first step within the tutorial is to do packages importing. So we're going to import pandas spd, then matplotlib.pyplot as plt, and then from stats models tsa or time series analysis, we are going to import whole winters as ets. Then we need to create the objects for this double exponential smoothing methods data, which is done through data reading. So we create the object spy, which is equal to pd or pandas dot read underscore csb, then the path to the data file, which is found within data directory, and the data file named double exponential smoothing methods data as a plain text file with dot csb or comma separated values. Index column as date, and we parse those dates as true. So let's go ahead and open that data file. As we can see, we have a plain text file with dot csb or comma separated values the first column with dates, and the second one with SPY adjusted. SPY corresponds to the ETF investment vehicle which intends to replicate the Standard & Poor's 500 index. Adjusted because this includes adjusted close prices which were adjusted for dividends and splits. Data has a daily frequency and it's from the beginning of 2007 all the way to the end of 2015, therefore 9 years of data. So back into the code file, the next step is we are going to convert the object regarding its frequency into a pandas frequency, which we do as spy equals to spy dot as frequency and b for a business calendar. Point of observation is that this business calendar has different length to the data we just read. Therefore, what we do next is for spy, we fill any non-available with the method forward fill, meaning that if there is any non-available, we're going to copy the value from previous day. 
and then we're going to delimit training and testing ranges. Training range for the optimal parameters estimation and testing range for the forecasting accuracy evaluation. So first we create the training range, SPYT, and from the previously created SPY, we're going to select from the beginning of the time series all the way to the end of 2013, therefore the first seven years of data. And then we have SPYF, that's the testing range, and from SPY we're going to select from the beginning of 2014 all the way to the end of 2015, therefore the last two years of data. Notice that this training and testing ranges delimiting was only included as an example for educational purposes, therefore it can be modified according to your needs. Now that we have the data ready, we can continue with double exponential smoothing methods, specifically with whole linear trend method and its ETS notation with additive errors, additive trend, no seasonality. So first we'll be doing the estimation of the corresponding method parameters within the training range. So we create this variable, hold T, T for training range, and we'll be using ETS feature from stats models, dot exponential smoothing, that's the function, capital E, capital S, and the data we'll be using is SPYT, the training range. Then the specification of the method, trend, additive, damped equals to false, seasonal equals to none, and we fit the corresponding method. And the next step is to do the forecast. We're going to name it hold F, F for that testing range, and from the previously estimated hold T, and again T for training range, we're going to forecast, and what we're doing here is a multi-step forecast. This multi-step forecast is done at the beginning of the testing range for the full testing range in advance without using any testing range data. Therefore, we specify the number of steps for which we want to do this multi-step forecast, which is the length of the testing range, SPYF. And then we're going to convert that forecast into a pandas data frame with PD or pandas dot data frame, capital D, capital F, of the previously calculated hold F, and we set its index as SPYF dot index. And the last step is we're going to visualize this within a chart. So we do so with fig1 or figure1, comma AX or axis equals to PLT from matplotlib dot subplots. And in this axis, we're going to plot training range data with its label, testing range data with its label, then the corresponding hold linear trend method multi-step forecast with its corresponding label. The legend located at the upper left, the title for this chart, whole linear trend with its ETS notation method, and then vertical axis or Y axis label as price, horizontal or X axis label as date, and we show the chart. Excellent. So let's go ahead and run this code file. As I've done it before recording this video, tutorial, the corresponding code file name is already stored here, so I just select it and go ahead and click run. Excellent. So that opens the running console and will briefly visualize the chart. So here we have whole linear trend with its ETS notation. Additive error, additive trend, no seasonality, the corresponding method, vertical axis price, horizontal one dates. From 2007, the beginning of 2007, all the way to the end of 2015, therefore the full range. Colored in blue, and according to the legend, that's the training range where we did the corresponding optimal parameters of whole linear trend method. Then colored in orange, Right here, we have the actual data for the testing range. And last, colored in green, we have whole linear trend method multi-step forecast. This multi-step forecast was done at the beginning of a testing range for the full testing range in advance, using the parameters previously estimated within the training range, but without using any of the data from the testing range. Excellent. So now that we've finished studying how to calculate whole linear trend method and to visualize it within a chart, let's go back into the slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of forecasting, business, trading or investment advice. Please, pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. 
Okay, so with this we finish this tutorial. Thank you for watching.